recognition of the time value of money can make a significant difference in the long-term impact of the capital budgeting decision. For example, cash flows that occur, occur early in the life of investment are worth more than those that occur later because of the time value of money. It is useful to recognize the timing of cash flows when evaluating projects. Capital budgeting techniques that take into account both the time value of money and the estimated net cash flows from an investment are called discounted cash flow techniques. They are generally recognized as the most informative and best conceptual approaches to making a capital budgeting decision. We will discuss two methods, the net present value and the internal rate of return. The net present value, or NPV method, involves discounting net cash flows to their present value and then comparing that present value with the capital outlay required by the investment. The difference between these two amounts is referred to as the net present value. Management determines what interest rate to use in discounting the future net cash flows. This rate is often referred to as the discount rate or the required rate of return. A proposal is acceptable when the net present value is zero or positive. At either of those values, the rate of return on the investment equals or exceeds the required rate of return. This is the rate of return management expects on investments. Sometimes it is called the discount rate or the cost of capital. When making a selection among acceptable proposals, the higher the positive net present value, the more attractive the investment. The NPV decision rule is this. A proposal is acceptable when the net present value is zero or positive. When the net present value is negative, the project is unacceptable or rejected. Let's calculate the net present value to determine if this company should purchase this equipment for $130,000. The company's net annual cash flows are $24,000. If we assume this amount is uniform over the asset's useful life, we can compute the present value of the net annual cash flows by using the present value of an annuity of one for 10 payments. The present value of an annuity is the value now of a series of future receipts or payments. Assuming a discount rate of 12%, the PV factor is 5.65022. If we multiply the net annual cash flows of 24,000 by, by the PV factor, we obtain a present value of the net cash flows of $135,605, and this number has been rounded. Stewart expects equal payments of $24,000 for the next 10 years, so we can use the present value of an annuity of one table, which is Table 4 in the Appendix G. Using the discount rate of 12%, the PV factor is 5.65022, and that is the intersection of the number of periods, which is 10, and the discount rate of 12%. If a company expects equal cash flows over an asset's five-year useful life, the discount factor it should use in determining present values if management wants a 12% return is 3.60. 478. It's the intersection of the number of periods, which is 5, and the discount rate, which is 12%. The net present value method compares the present value of net cash flows with the capital outlay required by the investment. The difference between these two amounts is the net present value, or $5,605. The proposed capital expenditure is acceptable at a required rate of return of 12% because the net present value is positive. When net annual cash flows are unequal, we cannot use annuity tables to calculate the present value. Instead, we use tables showing the present value of a single future amount for each annual cash flow. You would use Table 3 in Appendix G, the present value of 1. 
Stewardshipping Company expects the same total net cash flow of $240,000 over the life of the investment, but because of declining market demand for the product over the life of the equipment, the annual cash flows are higher in the earlier years and lower in the later years. The present value of the net annual cash flows is $144,367. Using Table 3 in Appendix G, the PV factor for each year is multiplied by the net annual cash flow. In this example, the present value of the net cash flows is greater than the $130,000 capital investment. As a result, the project is acceptable at a 12% required rate of return. The difference between the present value under equal cash flow, which was $135,605, and unequal cash flows, which was $144,367, is due to the pattern of the flow. Since more money is received sooner under this particular uneven cash flow scenario, its present value is greater. In most instances, a company uses a required rate of return equal to its cost of capital. That is, the rate that it must pay to obtain funds from creditors and stockholders. If management believes a project is riskier than the company's usual line of business, the discount rate should be increased. The discount rate has two elements, a cost of capital element and a risk element. Often, companies assume the risk element is equal to zero. The discount rate is often referred to as the required rate of return, the hurdle rate, and the cutoff rate. Using an incorrect discount rate can lead to incorrect capital budgeting decisions. Consider again the Stewart shipping example, where we use a discount rate of 12%. Suppose that this rate does not take into account the fact that this project is riskier than most of the company's investments. A more appropriate discount rate, given the risk, might be 15%. If we compare the net present values at the two rates, at the higher, more appropriate discount rate of 15%, the net present value is negative, and the company should reject the project. In our examples of the net present value method, we made a few assumptions. This company is considering investing in new equipment to produce fat-free snack foods. The following estimated cost, cost of capital, and cash flows were determined in consultation with the marketing, production, and financing departments. The company's net annual cash flow is $230,000. Net cash flows for the next 10 years are $230,000. The cost of capital is 15%, so the discount factor is 5.01877. In year 10, we expect to sell the, comp the equipment for $20,000, so we multiply that by 0.24719. We need to subtract the price of the equipment, which is a million dollars, and we, we also have to subtract the equipment overhaul in year five. The net present value is $59,825. The net present value is positive, so we would accept the project. The solutions to this exercise will be provided in the next slide.